What is going on you guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with a Dark Dimension 7 preview in regards to some of the best characters that we can be considering right now as we prepare. But with Mephisto being featured already in the splash art, we know that it's only going to be a matter of time before his introduction into Marvel Strike Force. So could very well likely be in the next patch or the patch following. But typically what we see with these Dark Dimension releases is that, they, you know, they usually fall around that May, June of the following year. So uh, we're just a few months away, but it does not mean we can't start preparing, start taking a look at which characters have good uh, value, especially with some of the recent additions. So I definitely want to be doing more of an update on this as we get closer and closer to his release date. So definitely stay tuned, guys. But as always, uh, we always want to take a look at the value and as well the, the true impact of characters. Now, what's new in this Dark Dimension, if you guys have been following along, and you know, there's always some way that they try to shake things up. Uh, this one specifically is the first time that we're seeing this new edition of the Mythic Trait. Uh, Mythic Trait is essentially some of the characters that have been previously unlocked through Dark Dimension and feature characters that are in the Dark Promotion. So there are only a specific list right now, as you can see to the right, which is Ultron, Doctor Doom, Dormammu, Super Scroll, Ultimus, Apocalypse, and Kestrel. Uh, having said that, uh, it's pretty clear who the main five are going to be, uh, just because of them being in the meta. So that really does rule out some of the characters that we can or can't be using. But having said that as well, we also have the breakdown of what the missions are going to look like. So as you can see, missions one, two, and three, there's no traits required there. We have missions four and five, respectively, being city. So definitely interesting because we're starting off with city, whereas uh, in Dark Dimension 6, we ended with city. So I do like how they kind of like to switch things up here in terms of the order. And then following that, mission six and seven is global. Global. We have mission 8 and 9 at Cosmic, and, and finally mission 10 and 11, Legendary, wrapping things up with the two nodes uh, in mission 12 and 13 as Mythic. And as you can see, what's been applied to the City, Global, and Cosmic is that we're not allowed Mythic or Legendary characters, which is the most exclusive list we've ever seen, to be honest, because even in the last uh, rendition of this, Dark Dimension 6, we were allowed a very powerful character in Apocalypse in being utilized, right? We were allowed Super Scroll not being uh, a legendary character being used in the cosmic section as well. But having those two losses are pretty big for the sections, but thankfully, these missions are only two nodes for their respective area. Adding the Mythic uh, reduced the node requirement, and it means that there's going to be more emphasis on the first three missions, but uh, that's why we need to the theory craft and try to you know, do as best as we can in terms of planning the best characters for optimal impact. Now, I want to start things off by talking about some of the best city characters as well as what we should be considering because uh, we want to lean on what was successful in Dark Dimension 6. Uh, and thankfully, city section was actually really, really smooth. So it could very well be city that uh, in, in this rendition of Dark Dimension was... Uh, the city section could be one of the harder areas because that's the first section we start off with. And given how powerful Robbie Riaz is, so he's definitely one of the lock characters, my honest opinion. Uh, but this synergy here I like is um, Robbie Riaz, Vulture, Lizard with Firestar and Craven. Um, they all really blend well with each other. As you can see, they're a beautiful mixture here of different traits. So um, the, a mix of different uniques and traits. So that way you're making sure that you're maximizing on the value of each of these origins. But as well, um, some strong, uh, notable characters that we've seen in Dark Dimension 6 include Big Time, Miss Marvel Hardlight. I personally brought in Shang-Chi, um, a little bit on the squishier side, but he's still at good value. We have Gwendam now getting added in as well, Spider-Man 2099. So I don't think this section's gonna be a, uh, a hard or decisive area because there's just so many different characters now being added, especially with Sinister Six being reworked and added. So, I mean, um, I think it's going to be more so down to what gear and resources you have available. But without a doubt, uh, Robbie Riaz is gonna be the must have for this section just because everything kind of synergizes with him he gets numerous turns based on his turn meter and bleed and if you have more characters like firestar and craven that add bleed into his dynamic he's going to get more turns right so just a must have for sure as for the other four if you can synergize with sinister six or superior i think you're going to get optimal value but other than that i think this section is going to be really good just because of the multitude of characters we have and keep in mind as well um you know at the time of recording right now we could see some very well some more notable additions getting added until that time that mephisto comes into the game global section so i think this one's going to be definitely one of the more trickier areas because we lost apocalypse in this section so we definitely have to theory craft this a little bit more but what we saw in dark dimension six was that yeah before i even go through the characters we saw that um actually the full rebirth team the full extreme x-men and as well as pegasus with apocalypse and without kestrel 
could all solo the uh, the individual nodes. So it gives us really good uh, value in the sense that some of these full roster teams like Extreme and Pegasus can actually get the job done, which means if you want to build them fully for this uh, section specifically, you might get some really good value. The one thing I do caution on is that when you build these full teams like Extreme and Pegasus, well, you are focusing on, you know, five mutants or, you know, four to five tech characters. And that's something we need to caution you on just because, again, when we're thinking about Dark Dimension, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we really need to be thinking about how, you know, these different origin traits and uniques do compound with each other. Now, having said that, I do want to talk about a few characters that have been added into this list. And as you can see, uh, one of them not being farmable just yet, but his event coming up is Black Knight. I think he's going to change the meta in terms of how um, the defenses are run. Arena is already changing in the works and as well as being added to the Cosmic Crucible and War. So uh, having Black Knight already built up naturally is going to give you a lot of value. And um, honestly speaking, um, he's kind of those one of those locked in characters that we can see, right? And and the reason I point this out is because we have other fellow members like Captain America and Captain Carter also being part of his team already in this mix. So it's a pretty big consideration here. They're going to have synergies. Definitely a strong uh, a strong consideration in terms of what can potentially be a very uh, powerful global team. We've had you know additional reworks being made to Gambit and part, part of the Extreme, and then Nightcrawler also being part of this mix. But the downside is that these two characters are very powerful. However, they do share the same Osmium gear, um, and that's also shared with Val, who's also, a, a, in my opinion, a cosmic must-have character. So just something to be mindful of. I think characters like Spider Weaver, Quicksilver are also really strong, um, just because of the value that they can bring. Quicksilver having his cooldowns reset as well. Spider Weaver being able to place charges, protect a team in a different kind of way. Uh, characters like Rescue, Black Widow, uh, as well as Mockingbird, they can provide a lot of immense support, speed up, and so forth. So I think right now, um, out of all the global global characters, the, this is a very strong list of 10 characters outside of the full extreme, outside of the four piece Pegasus that we can take advantage of. But in the meantime, I'm definitely going to be playing very close attention. But these are some of the best characters, in my honest opinion, right now. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. But I think this list right now is what we should be honing in on and seeing how this changes as we get closer to Mephisto's unlock. Cosmic section definitely took a big hit with Super Stroll getting taken out with him being a mythic character. However, um, there's still some really, really strong additions now. And if anything, we just have to be a little bit more closer in detail of what we want to bring in, especially the value, right? Val obviously has value already being part of Bifrost, um, being part of that meta incursion raid. But, you know, this could very well change in the next six months. So just something to be mindful of. I think Kang's a must have because of his damage, turn meter rewind, the amount of potency he can bring to the supporting uh, cast. And as well, uh, just having his immense barrier or clear is huge right but other than those two characters i mean uh, it's really up in the air in terms of the characters you may want to bring in so um it's going to be taking a look at you know which origin trait you want to bring in uh which uniques are you uh constricted on because i think the synergy of both moon dragon as well as um Philavel, they can be very powerful if you have infinity watch already built up same with the synergy of the eternals icarus and cersei right uh they work very well in tandem with each other um if you're going to bring one or two of them in I, I think it makes sense to bring the pair so that way they do have some synergy other supporting cast characters like void knight annihilation star lord we have the news ghost rider here uh the uh, being part of the, uh, the out of time team as well and then photon uh being part of secret defenders right all of them having value in their own way but um for sure i don't think any of them are above each other unless you're talking about the the synergy of the eternals but again it's gonna be a lot of mystic gear and that's kind of why i'm leaning back on it but if you guys have the mystic gear i for sure think Val, Kang, plus the Eternals, and maybe uh, Phylavel or Moondragon could be a very, very strong five-piece. Or if you're already bringing up high, uh, the Hive Mind team, Void Knight could be that nice slot in addition, but he is a kind of a one-and-done character in Dark Dimension. Um, so obviously, some value there, but I think in the meantime right now, Cosmic's the one we have to take a, clo take a closer look at. And especially um, seeing in the future here what that could be, um, especially with Kestrel being also taken out of this team. Finally, guys, Legendary section is kind of the big question mark I have right now. Um, I really like the meta in terms of where Doc Ock and Green Goblin sit with Superior 6. I really like Black Cat's crowd controlling aspects, Omega Red being a mutant character. Um, all of them kind of having their own little bit of traits here, but um, I have not honed in on a fifth character because I'm hoping by this time there's going to be a new legendary at that t at that point. And we've seen with the recent legendaries like Black Cat and Green Goblin how powerful these character additions have been. So for that reason, I'm leaving them blank for now, but I think Doc Ock and Green Goblin, if you have the tech gear to afford them, 
they're going to be really, really huge, especially with Doc Ock and being able to summon uh, a Shocker to have that superior six sinister six synergy um, to soak more damage. Black Cat and Omega Red being able to use crowd controlling. Heck, um, maybe at that point, we'll also see Phoenix's rework getting a dish added here. So she could very well be the fifth piece. But um, I have a strong feeling this next legendary character is going to be a very, very powerful addition, um, especially being uh, hinted that they're going to be part of the, the Deadpool slash Panda Pool team. Uh, we could be looking at another potential mutant character here as a legendary. So just something to be mindful of, guys. And I didn't cover the Mythic section because it's pretty obvious uh, who they're going to be here right now. Um, you know, the one thing to be mindful of is Dr. Doom and Dormammu do both share Mystic and Miasma gear. So I think that's the one thing to be considerate of. Otherwise, Super Scroll, Apocalypse, and Kestrel remain to be the best um, out of this five mixture. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For the time being, anyways, um, this is what we see as the strongest additions right now. And I'll definitely make some revisions as we get closer and closer, guys. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, as for right now, these are the best characters that I can see potentially being brought up to Dark Dimension 7 uh, in the meantime. Thank you for your time, as always. Do appreciate your guys' time, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.